Hello again. Welcome to another session of Digital Slide Review. I'm Dr. Lewis Hassel, and uh, today our program is uh, made possible by the Digital Anatomic Pathology Academy, a collaboration with Digital Pathology Association and Path Presenter. Our cases, as uh, usual, come from uh, the Digital Anatomic Pathology Academy, and I am coming to you from the campus of the University of Oklahoma Health Sciences Center, home of the Stevenson NIH uh, Cancer Center. Um, so we're going to look at some rather uh, uncommon uh, GI cases uh, uh, from time to time, and today's case is a whoops, a 58-year-old woman who has presented with anemia and GI bleeding. Um, on endoscopy, she is found to have sort of an odd appearance of slight erythema in the uh, antrum of the stomach. Here you see these sort of erythematous folds that all send, tend to sort of radiate towards the uh, pyloric uh, outlet channel here. Uh, she's somewhat anemic and has a uh, um, guaiac positive stool, but she has no history of liver disease, alcohol use, other medications, or known autoimmune disease. So uh, grossly, this uh, finding is uh, compatible with uh, what's been termed watermelon stomach. Uh, and that's based on this endoscopic appearance of radiating erythematous uh, appearance along the rugal fo folds oriented toward the pylorus. Uh, it's most commonly seen uh, actually in over half of the patients in association with uh, some sort of an autoimmune disease, be that Sjogren's syndrome or uh, Hashimoto's disease or other sorts of things. And that perhaps accounts for the relative female pre prevalence that is seen in these patients. But it can also be seen in patients with uh, liver disease, uh, cirrhotic disease, uh, and various uh, chronic renal diseases that result in renal fa failure. Now, we mentioned liver disease here because it's very important to distinguish this uh, from portal hypertensive gastropathy uh, since uh, antrovascular ectasia does not respond to uh, portal uh, hypertensive uh, reducing uh, interventions. So here's a, a representative uh, gastric biopsy. And at low power, this uh, can look uh, fairly uh, unremarkable. We don't see significant inflammation here. Um, we don't see uh, too much disarray of the glands. Uh, we don't see any intervening neoplasm. However, even at this magnification, uh, the red cells might give it themselves away. So here we see a few clustered superficial red cells. Um, and if we've gotten that uh, history of uh, antral erythema, we might start by looking at uh, what we find here. And sure enough, as we look at this, you can see that this is a rather ectatic vessel to be so close in the sub-epithelial uh, uh, location uh, as to be concerning. And if we look a little bit further, we can see that uh, there are other dilated vessels uh, and somewhat ectatic appearing vessels uh, in this uh, lamina propria. So there we have the vascular ectasia component uh, of our disorder. And seeing that, we might say, well, maybe they're bleeding from these vascular ectasias, and we might think angiodysplasia or something like that. Um, the other clue, however, here is in this other fragment, and that's right there. And you can see there's this little pink plug. We go to higher magnification, you can see that there's hemorrhage associated with this corresponding to the endoscopic appearance of erythema. And we see a nice little fibrin platelet thrombus here within this superficial vessel. Uh, over here, we can see another little trace of one there, again, in a superficial, slightly ectatic vessel. So uh, those are two of the key hallmarks uh, for this uh, disorder. Now, it's also been described that you can see some sort of uh, spindle cell fibroplasia in some of these uh, lesions, um, but that's uh, not seen here to any significant degree. So as I mentioned, our considerations include uh, portal hypertensive gastropathy. And the key thing to remember is location. 
So gastric antral vascular ectasia is primarily antral, um, and it tends to be sort of reddish, striped pattern, or in a more diffused honeycomb pattern uh, as well. Uh, this histologic pattern is fairly specific in terms of the vascular ectasias and the uh, microthrombi. In contrast, portal hypertensive gastropathy is more common in the fundus or body and may more typically have a uh, mosaic-like pattern or point-like lesions um, of um, sort of uh, telangiectasias or uh, hemorrhages within the mucosa. Um, the pattern is not specific and uh, in contrast, these respond to anti-hypertensive agents uh, in the portal tract, whereas gastric antral vascular ectasia does not. So let's just take another quick look uh, to contrast these. Here is the gastral antral vascular ectasia pattern. Now this uh, also is in the antrum, um, and this is the more honeycomb type pattern, but is much more easily confused with that red dot punctate uh, pattern of uh, portal hypertension. So you'd have to be careful uh, with uh, this particular presentation that sometimes uh, in this location, you can get a little bit of overlap of these uh, differing findings. And that's of course then is the value of the uh, biopsy, which can be uh, fairly confirmatory for us. So let's just uh, review then again, uh, what we're looking for. Uh, here's a representative uh, set of biopsies. Uh, we'll look for the telltale uh, pinkness. Um, and in fact, we'll see here right off, we've got there a dilated vessel with a little bit of a fibrin plug right there in the lumen. So we've got both the uh, vascular ectasia and a little bit of a thrombus there. Uh, again, we don't see too much of the fibroplasia, but other findings in this stomach uh, biopsy here are uh, relatively normal. Uh, we'll go over to. Uh, uh, this fragment is fairly normal appearing, so we're going to skip over that. And then we'll come here to this uh, fragment here. And here we can see the uh, superficial hemorrhages um, involving the uh, um, uh, surface of the uh, rugi type folds. We see here uh, some more vascular ectasia. Uh, and right here, we see another nice little fibrin plug, uh, really starting to organize a little bit. So that uh, nicely summarizes what we expect to see with uh, gastric antral vascular ectasia, which is our final sign out on today's case, uh, and uh, something that you will uh, perhaps not see very commonly, but uh, now you're prepared and will be able to recognize it. Thanks for joining us. Hope you enjoyed this, and uh, please subscribe. Uh, share your comments below. We welcome those uh, comments and suggestions for future topics, future videos, uh, and ways to make our uh, uh, presentation more useful to you educationally. Uh, the digital slides are available for your review, and we'll post the link to those uh, below. Uh, so hope to see you again soon.